been a while. <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, it was Humberto. Humberto Crackbench. Yes, it was Humberto Crackbench. We're Crack trying Bench to remember his name, name the... for, for ages. Welcome back to Carbony Bronze. I am Chris. Yeah, it's... Uh, and I'm Sean. It's been, what, two and a half, three months? It's been almost six years. But we've, um, we've finally come back to triumphantly talk about episode four of, of Altered Carbon. Oh, wasn't I... I was telling people the names of these episodes, wasn't I? What, hang on, let me just look. Let me look. Yeah. I, got it, I got it right here. I got it written it's down. important to know. Yep, I got it written down. Hang on, what did I... Uh, 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 Force of Evil. Wait, really? Oh, yeah, that is the name of this episode. No. Force of Evil. Force of Evil? Long time listen Before we go on, long time listeners will recognize that I'm using a new microphone. Well, especially if they're listening to these at Marathon and they've just endured your previous microphone. Maybe I should start doing some ASMR stuff. Uh, did I tell Is you it... about my experimental ASMR channel? No. <laughs> this is how it goes. I whisper to you for 45 seconds and I push a shopping trolley full of padlocks down the stairs. <laughs> how did you get... How did you... How did you get it up the stairs? No, the stairs are, t- are to a lower plane than the trolley started on. <laughs> Obviously. Oh, right, okay. Obviously. Oh, right. Oh, I'm, I just wheeled the sorry. trolley around till I found some stairs. <laughs> Oh right. Okay. Um, so the, this this episode is um, the a, worst one. It, it's the worst one. It's like it's actually not even close. We've been bitching about the the show up till now. This one is just practically nothing happens. It, no, exactly nothing happens. And everything because, that does happen is wrong. Yeah, they they had one thing they wanted to get done in this episode, and it's actually quite a cool thing in the book, but. That it happens in the last what two minutes, two and a half minutes of the sh- of the episode, maybe five minutes. I don't know what thing you're talking about, but but wait, wait, wait till we get to it, then tell me, and I like okay. surprised. All right. All right. Um, so um, to recap, <laughs> yep, the, when we when we last left our hero, the Vatch, yeah, oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, he had he was impersonating the mother of dead of girl Elliot, and his informant was murdered and he was abducted by Michael Eklund and taken to a secret place to be interrogated. Yes. Um, that, that looks a, that, like in the opening sequence, it looks a lot cleaner in the show than it does in the book in my head. <laughs> oh, the, no, I always imagined the way clinic being pretty surgically pristine. It's a, an alleged, it, it, it has the appearance of a legitimate medical operation, even though what it mainly does is chop up and dispose of corpses. Oh, see, I imagined them wheeling him through the way clinic bit and then to like like a shipping container out the back where they did all that. No, that's the horrifying part about it. It's that all the really nasty stuff is just done there. It's just done there in like, the open and everyone knows, which is which is why he's so morally outraged and murders everybody. <laughs> isn't that just because it's the future and nobody cares about meat people anymore? Uh, I mean, virtual interrogations are still super illegal unless you're the cops, which yeah, is what they're doing. That's true. Even then, I still think it would be... It should be illegal, right? What should be illegal? Like, like virtually... Because they interrogate him to try and get information out of him. That's like the... the that's the most that he's... That's the, that's the whole thing of this episode. Yeah, that's most of what the Vatch is, is doing this time around. Yeah. yeah, shirtless pretty much the entire time. Even the bit where he's outside of the clinic, he's not wearing a shirt. It's true. I, I will like to say, that guy has a weird belly button. Um... Well, I, yes, I, I think it's, I, I think, I think Chris, and this is more an indictment on, on you and oh, I. Oh yeah, no, no, no I absolutely no. That's what a belly button looks like when you don't have a massive a amount of flap <laughs> underneath it. Yeah. Yeah. As, as a large gentleman, yeah. I have a very big belly button. That's what, that's what a belly button looks like when you stretch it out over some tight washboard abs. He, look, he's a very well together, like well put together man. I think I have abdominal muscles, you know, they're somewhere. Oh, they're, they're there. Down there. I mean, they have to be. Like something, something stops your guts from falling out the front of you. Isn't that what my belly button is for? Isn't it like the plug hole of the human being? <laughs> no, that's your other mouth. Oh, my bottom mouth. Yeah, haven't you haven't you thought about that? If you really wanted to, you could feed yourself through your belly button. Not what I thought you were going to say. Uh, but if if you if you really wanted to, Chris, I couldn't I couldn't feed myself through my belly button. Why do you believe that? <laughs> Why do you believe I that? I don't believe it. I just thought it'd be funny to say. We well, look, we've we've tiptoed around it uh, <laughs> for too long. Are you just gonna are you just gonna say that I'm not funny? Uh, no, I was gonna say we should probably talk about this execrable uh, waste of fucking time. Um, you know, you know, episode. you know what? Before before we even go into it, really, I worried today that we might be crazy, 
and then I looked online and I saw that this show has an 8.6 on IMDb. Mm. On Metacritic, it's a 62. Look, I don't know. I, I think we might be the only sane men. But at the same time, I, I, it's impossible to tell how many of the show's sins I would forgive if I didn't know how badly they were butchering a better story. Yeah. Well, because every person I've spoken to who has just watched it and they were just like, oh, Netflix did this new cool show. Um, and then I watched it and they're like, oh, I really enjoyed it. It was all, it was all the sci-fi things I was looking for. Uh, you were in you were incorrect to want those things and you got them from the wrong place i mean i don't know look, I, I i'm i'm trying to be mindful of it like oh i'm not people i'm not fuck, oh, okay. fuck what other people think i hate this show <laughs> I, I hate this show well, so much it gives me energy <laughs> it keeps you up at night i have to get up early to hate this show as hard as i oh, do god um all right, so we should probably talk about it. So the Vag is being kidnapped. He's, he's being held in a clinic, the Way Clinic, for interrogation by a criminal. Yeah. So the the episode actually drops the ball in the first frame when it shows uh, the interior of the Way Clinic with the Vatch hooked up to some electrodes being interrogated in virtual. I'm like, no, no. The way this scene goes is that he wakes up in the virtuality and has to figure yeah. out that that's what's happening. You've given the game away, you frauds, you idiots. Yeah, you proper morons. Oh my god! And then so uh, yeah, so we get that. Um, th- them just really not understanding how cool the virtual reality idea that they that Richard Richard Morgan does in the book is. They're just glossing over all of the coolness of this set of scenes. Yeah, it's actually just a way to punch someone over and over without having to wait for them to regain consciousness in between bouts of punching. It's really all... Well, I mean, uh, uh, Dimitri Cadman, who is the one who's interrogating him, does get more creative than that by ripping bits off him with the pliers and setting him on fire and blowtorching his legs off. And it's all proper gory and disturbing. Could could you even do that? What, blowtorch someone's legs off? Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it just be you melted their legs until they came off? Well, I mean, you can cut through steel sheeting with a blowtorch, so I'm pretty sure you can go through a leg. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't suppose I've ever really thought about it before. Really? Oh, man. Blowtorching people's legs off is one of my favorite things to do. Yeah, but would you use a MIG or a TIG welder? Neither. I'd use a blowtorch. You're not oh, okay. listening, Sean. You're not listening. Oh. Would you use one of the... Would you When you wanted to set him on fire, would you use one of uh, the non-boring companies, not a flamethrower? The non-boring company's not a flamethrower. Yeah, it's this Elon Musk company. Um, it's one of his other companies, Chris. It's, I think it's called the not non-boring company, but they sell a gun that is a flame. They, they sell a flamethrower, but they're not allowed to call it a flamethrower for legal reasons. I'm confused. So it's literally called M- M- not a flamethrower. Musk's stupid tunnel digging outfit is called the Boring Company. Why are you calling it the non-boring company? Because that's what it was in the picture that I saw. You're very confused. You're confused and wrong. I I usually am one of one or the other. Now I must now I must see. Uh, I want to see how wrong I am. The episode am. is devoted swiftly into billionaire fuckhead Elon Musk and his stupid extracurricular activities. He does do that. Uh, a lot of stupid extracurricular activities. You know he's powering South Australia. Well, he's not really powering South Australia. He sold batteries to South Australia. Yeah, that's true. And now the South Australian government are trying to backpedal on it. I don't really want him to do anything to do with him. Or at least the opposition don't want anything to do with him. All these local politics are really germane to the discussion of the Vatch's latest blowtorch related adventure. That's true. Uh, also, did you did you laugh when you saw him without legs? Because I did. <clears throat> uh, no, I didn't. I, I don't think not having legs is funny, Sean. I found that most upsetting. No, I don't think not having legs is funny either. I thought the terrible acting and, oh, um, my and legs. weird CGI was was bad. Yeah, possible. The, everything that's in virtual reality has this kind of um, fisheye effect around the edges of the frame. Yeah. Which I found uh, quite distracting and semi-migraine inducing. I mean, I realize why they're doing it. They're just trying to, like, obviously show you, oh, this is virtual reality. You, the audience, need to pick that up straight away because the people in our audience aren't allowed to think for themselves. Yeah. We'll come to self-realization. You're completely correct, Chris. It is just the boring company. I'm an idiot. Yeah, yeah, I know. 
But he, they are selling flamethrowers that are that are called not a flamethrower. Yes, I'm very aware of that as well. It's, and uh, yes, you could pro- probably blowtorch someone's legs off with one of those if you were sufficiently determined. And add enough fuel, probably. Apparently they have shit fuel economy compared to a comparable product you can get from like a hardware store. The super overpriced are not very good. Oh, okay. Yeah, so suck that, Elon Musk. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, in between... Oh, back to the thing we're actually talking about. In, in between the uh, bouts of terrible she- shitty CGI legs and fish eyes, uh, we're still getting flashes to Ortega. Um, okay, so her- Ortega's subplot in this episode is so dumb, but also my favorite. <laughs> it's... It's actually been this this particular one was the best thing in the whole show so far. <laughs> it kind of was. So here's yeah. the, here's the setup. It's the it is it's Thanksgiving, or Halloween, yep. or I don't know some holiday. I don't. Know. Oh, actually, it's, it's probably Dia de Muerte. It, it is Dia de la, de la Muertos. It's that. I'm, I'm not, it's that. Yeah. And uh, Ortega has taken her grandmother, her abuela, mm-hmm. out of storage and put yep. her in the body of a bearded, tattooed gangster. <laughs> Yep, he, a very, very tall, <laughs> very uh, tall, and, and very white. It's he's a skinhead. He's a skinhead. Yeah. Well, I think he ha- is. He have a shaved head. He does. He's got tats all over it. So this giant yeah. ginger skinhead has to affect the accent <laughs> of an el- <laughs> of an elderly Mexican woman <laughs> for the yeah. entire episode, and it's fantastic. Yeah, and it's just it's just he, her grandma saying, "Hey, is there any weed? Uh, oh, look, I'm a I'm a dude, so I'm peeing standing up." Um, and cussing in front of the grandkids because that's hilarious and getting oh, mad fantastic. drunk because having a body is fun it's it's cyberpunk weekend at Bernie's mm, that's the entire story is <laughs> cyberpunk weekend at Bernie's well yeah <laughs> well you may recall Bernie was dead but he didn't move a lot unless he was puppeteered oh, he moved, no. by one of the other yeah he, mo- he, he moved loads he was very animated for a dead man weekend at Bernie's exists in a world where rigor mortis doesn't exist um, and dead people apparently don't smell either. We're not very much. Ah, it, oh, well, if it takes place over a whole weekend, yeah, he should definitely start to smell. Oh, well, he, he should have smelled like shit immediately. Oh, yeah, he you dies at the off. start of the film. You hose him off, Sean. You hose they Bernie don't change off. His clothes. They don't change his clothes for the first act. Hashtag hose Bernie off. Oh. <clears throat> and Wait, so the is actual... that a political thing? What? <laughs> is that a political thing? Hashtag hose Bernie off. Yeah. No. Is it Bernie, Bernie Sanders? There can be two Bernies. Are you sure? This is corpse. This is Bernie Corpses. Corp, corp oh. Sanders. Bernie. <laughs> I'm so tired, Sean. The, the <laughs> hatred that I thought would sustain me has petered out. All right, it's all right. Just, th- just, think of, just think about the virtual reality stuff. Okay. Well, look. We'll, we'll do Ortega's subplot first because it's, it, it's easier. And because it's not in the book, I have fewer things about it that make me angry. I would have, I, just to be fair, I would have watched like a, a, a mini series about Ortega and her grandma in a white man's body. Yeah, you know, the, uh, but it's a buddy cop series, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. That'd be fun. Oh, yeah. So the entire point of this prolonged holiday gathering of Ortega's extended family. His religion is bad, yo. Um, yeah, is basically further... Um, uh, which does neo catholicism th- prohibition against um, re-sleeving nonsense just to I mean, super that, establish that this is a thing that exists and will be important later and has been already yeah i mean that 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 does exist in the book oh like, yeah absolutely into- but it's just a throw it's a, it, it took five lines to establish it's not oh uh, there's, there's a couple there's a, there's a couple of bits throughout the book where he's basically like religion is dumb well i mean obviously and even more in the third book for reasons is it did, uh, did did Richard K. Morgan get a little bit crazy? What? No, no. no someone oh, that is it like proper plot reasons? Yeah. So to care the uh, Sarah is that the a vatch? Name? The woman that the vatch ends up doing a lot of stuff to try and save the um the stored version of in the book, not necessarily in the in the show, ends right. ends up um really dead on Harlan's world, and her stack is chucked in the ocean somewhere. The hacker, right? No, 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 not, um, not Vera Elliot. Um, oh, okay. The one, the one from Harlan's world, the one who Kawahara threatens. Oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. His compliance. She ends up really dead. Well, I mean, her stack exists, but it's it's not retrievable. Um, hmm. on Harlan's world because her the man she ended up marrying was a religious fundamentalist who 
forced her to join his religion and they don't believe in re-sleeving. And so uh, the Vat so spends dumb. the greater part of the book hunting down and murdering the zealots of that particular faith. Because he has awesome. a grudge. Well, yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it doesn't jive with religion uh, in the fullness of time. But uh, if there was a word I had to describe this show, Sean, it would be thin. Fucking yep. paper thin. Because it needs to be 12 episodes or whatever Netflix has decided is the ideal length for a, you know, a Netflix series. And so yeah. they just have to fill time. They have to fill time with the, with nonsense, with just people fucking around and having dinner and like, vaguely referencing like, the themes of the work. Or, or a VR training flashback in a forest. Oh, don't fucking start me on that. Why is, why is the, so they, they do, they do flashbacks, right? Yeah. Back to, once again, Takeshi Kovac in his original body with someone he never met. Yeah, yeah. So being trained by being being trained by someone who was dead by the time he started hanging out with other people. Yep, it's fine though. Uh, Kalkrist Falconer is totally alive and totally hot for the vatch. Oh my god, that that's why. And as soon as oh, she no, was no, 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 don't, don't get ahead. You don't knew, get ahead. You, knew ahead. That, you knew that you knew that was going to go. Uh, you knew that was going to happen, didn't you? You knew it was going to happen. It was very obvious and bad, but don't get there. Come on, let's winch it back. Okay. Let's winch it back. All right, so so the first thing so that the batch is being interrogated. He's, he's being, being interrogated. beaten up. And the first thing they fuck up is be he's being interrogated by an actual person. Like, yes, the reason that you use virtual interrogation software is because you can run the simulation at a hundred times real time and torture someone for hundreds of hours in one hour. Yeah, that's it. Or in thirty seconds. It's really not that like, complicated. Now, time dilation. The the scenario um, in the book is he is sleeved in a female body and tortured and raped with a soldering iron and i can see why oh they wouldn't God. necessarily want to put that in on yeah, a tv that, show that, that that scene was very confronting in the book yeah it's super unpleasant so yeah I, like I, like that, that you get a pass on that yeah fine i don't do not demand is, absolute there, accuracy in everything there is, there is no way you could have gotten that past any kind of executive <laughs> It's like no, I don't, we're I don't not get doing how, this. How laid back your 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 company is? That's not happening on screen. <laughs> so the torture to which he is subjected is reasonably horrific, mostly fire related. Yep, that that bit wasn't bad. Apart from the dumbness of torturing him in real time with a yes, with an actual interrogator instead of a bunch of chatbots with power drills. Ah, oh, just missed opportunities. Just, they they just don't get it, Sean. They just don't get no. it. One, one understood. compliment I will make about the, the Way Clinic is the auto surgeon is properly fucking horrifying. Oh my, you mean the thing in the background that's yeah, chopping yeah. up that? Yeah, so the auto surgeon Ch is- Chopping up the obvious mannequin. Uh, I don't know, she looked fairly convincing to me when they had her open. No, the, the, oh no, the, the open part, that, that's convincing. The face. Yeah, well, the, I mean, she's the shot of her face. That's she's dead, Sean. They don't move when they're dead. Yeah, but they don't look like, they don't look like they were made in a factory either. Well- I mean, everyone technically was made in a factory if they're not in the original sleeve. I anyway, mean, I'm, so I'm the auto surgeon is world. meant to be a, a robot that does operations, but the way clinic has configured them to dismantle people and separate their parts to be sold off. So that's yeah, like that scalp on the floor. Exactly, it's really graphic, Horrifying. graphic and nasty. So props yeah, for that, really I nice. guess. Yeah. Oh. Um. So most of the episode is uh, it's the Vatch being tortured. And flashbacks to his torture resistance training in the woods somewhere with, uh, with uh, not Virginia Vadora, that's who it should be, but it's Kalkris Falconer. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know why, I don't know why it's in the, are they doing it in the woods? So, cause it's out in the middle of nowhere, so no one's going to find them or are they doing it in the woods because they felt like they needed to make some weird training montage thing? And then they change their minds halfway through and they're like, no, wait, we'll just have the one shot in Vatch's head. I think the deal is that, um, cause there's a, there's like cloaking devices set up in a perimeter around them. I think they're just hiding yeah. out in the woods. Cause that's what you do when you're a high tech mercenary, not mercenary, revolutionary. Th there we go. Uh, I still don't really understand. Oh no. I don't know why that is in the woods and not in a bunker somewhere, but uh, maybe they were. Cause the, the, the table thing they're all plugged into, they're all jacked into, is covered in moss. So it's been there a while. Oh no, that, I think that's just a rock. <laughs> the actual no, no, it's a big, it's a big table thing. Yeah, it's a rock, Sean. It's just a rock. The actual VR apparatus is sitting on top of it. 
It just happens that there was a nice big dramatic stone table for them to use in the middle of this clearing. So, so they've gone out to a henge <clears throat> to do some VR training. Yeah, proper henge. Saying. Yeah. Get all henged up. Ah, oh, Jesus. Jack me into the henge. That's what druids were. They're just VR. This episode is now going to be called Jack Me Into the Hinge. Jack, you... Oh, no, Chris. There there are plugs in the big table thing. No. Oh, well, actually, maybe the whole thing is a virtuality then. Maybe they're two levels deep. What, you like their Inception? Yeah, they're like Inception. I don't know. Yeah. You, are, you, are you sure? Are you sure there are plugs in the, the, the rock? I, I told you I've got the on a loop in the background here. I've uh, there, there's, 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 there's plugs in the rock. That's completely insane. It's like it's it's a, it's about fourteen minutes in where you're seeing that. If you want to check, <clears throat> I, gonna, I, don't, check? I don't have my PlayStation turned on, so no, I will not be checking. Oh, okay, okay. Fine, I believe yeah. you if you say it's there. That's completely yeah. nuts. So <clears throat> we we now come up to like our our thirteenth instance of Jimmy DeSoto erasure, which I do not approve of at all. Oh where yeah, his catchphrase "Got to get to the next screen" has now been attributed to Kelchrist Falconer. And it's, I mean that really doesn't fit with the tone of the rest of her uh, her rhetoric. No, no, it's it's just like we needed to try. We we wanted to give something for the fans, but the fans of the book aren't going to like the show. No, they're going to be mad that you fucked up that quote. It's especially yeah. I mean, they're not listen when, to us complain when, about it. When she says "got to get to the next screen," she means use the power of love to escape from virtual torture by hacking the Matrix. Which is the thing that happens when Jimmy DeSoto says it. He says, "You don't." It means you don't have to win. You just have to survive long enough for the situation to change. Like he's been yeah. way less stupid about it. It's uh, so. Yeah, look, there's yeah. no stepping around it. This is what happens. It turns out that you can hack virtualities from inside just by wanting it badly enough. That's the oh, secret that, uh, of the Envoy Torture Resistance Training. Well, it's not just by making by wanting it bad. It's not the secret. <clears throat> um, it's it's you have to. She literally says you have to basically go insane. Look, no matter what, Hallucin- hallucination it allows you to like delete parts of the goddamn program. It's like it's complete fucking nonsense. It's it's total fucking nonsense. It's once it's again a- them trying to make the Vatch into a superhero. When in the book, when this happens, he knows he's fucked. Yeah. Like, and he lists all the ways he's fucked. They can run this forever. There's nothing I there's nothing I can offer them because I'm not who they th- they think I am. So I don't have the and answers nothing I they can want. Say, nothing I can say will make them, uh, other than what they want to hear, will make them think anything else. Yeah, or make them stop hurting me. They have no reason to stop. In fact, the way virtual interrogation works, they don't even need to... They can listen to your sc- to your screamed confessions in playback without needing to actually stop it. Like there's, yeah, like, there's they can just there's, run run the automated program for twenty four hours and then come and set that to two thousand four hundred years and then just come back the next day. All right, this absolutely, one's ready. you are irredeemably screwed. It's a really really bad situation, but it turns out that just you know, envoy magic will get you out of virtual prison now for reasons. Yeah, it's uh, it's, it, it's very stupid. It's very stupid. It's it it, it feels it feels like writers who don't normally write science fiction being like, yeah, we just got to figure out a moral for the episode and then sort of make the science about that moral. And the moral is love. Oh God. I mean, the stupid thing is once he magics himself out of the system, which by the way, is not in any way a solution because if you're being virtually interrogated, there's probably someone standing near you with a gun to shoot you in the yeah. fucking head when they're done with you. And being, a- well, I mean, I'm, Unless, unless they're doing the automated thing where they're just like, yeah, okay, stick him in the fridge and we'll come back tomorrow and see if he's insane. At the very least, you will definitely be restrained. Oh, yeah. Once he gets out of virtual through the power of, <clears throat> of love, he does exactly what he did in the book, which is trick them into thinking he's someone more important than he is. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that's, that's fine because that's, that's what makes sense in that particular yeah, sure. moment. Yeah, sure, absolutely. But uh, why did we need to have the intervening half hour of episode full of nonsense? Well, we didn't. Why was that? We well, well, it's because they couldn't think of anything else to write. Yeah, I suppose. Anyway, he makes out with Falconer in the past, and oh my fucking god, whatever. And now, now we get after, to after after offering offering a digital representation of his heart. Oh yeah, he he pulls out his polygon heart and says, "I love you." <laughs> oh, I, I I love you, Kel Chris. I love you so much. Uh, and then he murders everyone and leaves. And and the part where he I mean, that's that's in the book. No, that is in the book, but. But Sean, 
I have mm-hmm. the the worst case of Sunjet blue balls in the history of Sunjets <laughs> or blue balls. <laughs> All I want from this show now is for someone to fire a fucking sunjet, and they're not. They're not going. to. They're never going to because they, even though they spent so much. Oh, actually, you know, what? I just realized what this is. Mm-hmm. This is a bottle episode. It all takes oh place God, in one right. room, and it doesn't have that big an effects budget. This was a fucking budget saving. This was an hour of time that I wasted watching their budget saving exercise. Well. It- Actually, yeah, you're right, because it's about halfway through the season, episode four of, of ten. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's right. A, it's, it's, a, it's almost halfway. It's, it's, a, it's a slightly shorter episode. It's only 49 minutes. Oh, I didn't even notice that. It is like, so yeah, it's a, it's a slightly shorter episode. It's a goddamn holding pattern. It's just, let's waste time and not spend much money. Anyway. You are exactly right. <laughs> he doesn't even make sure to to hit everyone's stack on the way out. There's a couple of people he just shoots, and then he shoots the, he shoots one guy in the back as he's leaving even though he's already yeah. mostly dead. I'm like, no, oh. no, you're wrong. See, just the, the, the characterization of Kovach is so all over the place. But, well, but the, this right here is him going, nah, Nuremberg rules. The fact that you're all following <laughs> orders does not excuse you. I'm going to personally murder every person in this building. Well, the, the other thing is that they're, they're, it's, it's, it's almost like they're just trying to show, like, especially with Ortega's B-plot, they're just like, Ortega, even though she's done questionable things, like put a tracker on him when she wasn't supposed also to. Also steal someone's body for the purposes of giving her grandmother a good time, which is yeah, so very, it, it, very it, but, illegal. Uh, yeah, it, it is illegal, but it's not like, like you, could, you could argue that it was still kind of the right thing. Oh, sure. I, I was a- more outraged before I realized what she was doing with his, with his sleeve. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's it's it like she's she's doing kind of the right thing. So and and she's doing it all for love, Chris. It's all for love. Oh, the episode's about love and the all power of love. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, because because that's what television shows need to be about these days. Just like they were back in the eighties, when I'm sure the people who are writing this show were growing up. Mm. Mm. Everything's got to have a message, Chris. Well, the message that I wanted to have is sun jets are great. Let's fire them all the time. That's not the did, message did we, that they're going for. Did we say in an early episode what sun jets are? Yeah, I explained it. They're the uh, directed okay. energy weapon of this um, of this setting. Laser beams. Yeah, like lasers or some sort of plasma weapon. That, it's it's what he uses to burn a lot of people's heads off in this sequence yep. in the book and in the yeah. sequence that follows, but which he doesn't use in this episode because the stupid fucking uh, flechette gun that retrieves its ammunition for some reason is what he mostly uses. That in the next. Yeah. Well, I did I did enjoy that uh, like that 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 one guy was like ah oh, I just work here and then the flechette came back through his head. Yeah, I guess. I guess that was good. I don't know. So I, I I enjoyed the show for all of the five minutes that Ortega was having her B plot and that one shot. That's that's so action movie one liner, which is kind of against the aesthetic of the violence in Altered Carbon. Yeah, it's like it's like, never it's never really very cool when he kills people. It's just nasty and messy. Yeah, it's ultra violence, not for ultra violence's sake, which is what most action movies are about. It's ultra violence to show, God, this is a future where no one cares about anything to do with being alive because you can stay alive forever, essentially. Yeah, I guess that's true. Um, uh, do I have any other notes here? Oh, so the, the Vatch's new backstory is that he worked for the Protectorate as a bad guy and then he was <laughs> um, abducted by... Oh, the- yeah. Oh, yeah, They t- the fucking story of the, the gorilla who um, had bombs in her system and yelled that's fucking enough and blew up her captors which is a really yeah. which is a really cool story in the book and which impacts the finale in various ways but now it turns out that Takeshi was one of her interrogators like what yep. <laughs> yeah in this it's... in this version i mean he's not the best guy in the book but in this version he's just a, he's just a fucking dickhead who did a lot of terrible things then fell in with a bunch of doomed revolutionaries who should already have been dead and did more terrible things like well, I mean, you can already see what they're going to do. It's now Ortega and he are slowly going to... They've been slowly intersecting for this last four episodes. Mm. And then in the fifth and sixth episodes, he's going to, like... They're going to be all lovey-dovey. And he's going to look like he's mended his way. He's going to stop murdering people because that's not uh, what she... I don't think, think that's going to happen. And, I think he's going to murder then, even more. And, no, 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 no. And then after that, in the final three episodes, he's going to be like, no, wait, I got to get this done. I've got to murder a bunch of people. So I'll send her away or some bullshit like that. 
I'll make her not love this body or the version of me that's in this body and not Riker so that I can protect her from me being a murdering asshole. Yeah, well, it's funny that you mentioned that. So the, the revelation in this episode is that, yes, he is in Elias Riker's sleeve, which is yes. completely fucking bizarre because Ortega has given no hint at any point that she knows him or that she has history with this person. Like, all the little clues that are there in the book that Kovach picks up on are all just gone, yeah. and it's just this random bombshell dropped on you right now in this it, fucking yeah, budget-saving episode. <sighs> it's <laughs> I hate this show, Sean. It's so bad. I know. It's it's quite infuriating, like, that, that, a, that A, we chose to try and do an episode per episode, um, and and B that they decided this is what they were going to roll out. It makes me really, really worried for the Dark Crystal show that they're doing next year. I'm sure it will be at least as good as the CGI Dark Crystal movie from a few years ago. We don't talk about that. <laughs> that that film never happened, Chris. It's like Devil May Cry Two. It never happened. Are you sure? Are I'm you, very sure. Are you Chris. sure it never happened? <laughs> this, this one's got actual puppets in it. Oh man! Speaking of actual puppets, hmm. so I told you I watched Robocop. That's what this. That's what this. That's what this show. Oh, that would be so puppets. good. I watched Robocop this morning. Yeah. Uh, yes, because Chris had never watched it before. Now, no, I've never seen Robocop before. The, the, it had the original one. It had this. It has this fantastic puppet. So, right before Alex oh, Murphy, who yeah. becomes Robocop, um, dies, yeah. he gets uh, his arm blown off, and he's shot a bunch of times by bad bad men with shotguns. And for whatever yeah. reason, the director decided that he wanted the shot where. You know, he actually gets proper killed. I shot in the head by uh, Clarence <laughs> Bodica, which is the funniest yeah. fucking name. Uh, yeah. He wanted him to lurch oh, to his sort of half to his feet from his prone position and then get shot in the head. Um, and the headshot's quite gory, like the back of his skull blows out and the uh, squibs yeah. goes off, go off, which you can't actually really do on an actor. And so, no, because they would hurt them because they wanted him getting up and getting shot to be the same take without any cut. They built this, like, full-body puppet of, of Paul Weller, who, like, yeah. lurches into a sitting position and grimaces in pain before getting shot in the head. And you can tell it's a puppet, but it's a really fucking convincing one. Hey there, True Believers. Editor Chris here. There was another full hour of uh, discussion here, mostly about Google Chrome and things Sean is wrong about. Uh, for the sake of everyone's sanity, I've cut it out, so let's just skip straight to the wrap-up. So that was episode four. What was it Force of Evil? Pure Evil? What the... F just a shitty fucking force, episode. Force of don't of... spend any money. We're serious. No money. Force of Evil. Well, I mean, like, f fine. Pay Netflix for the rest of your Netflix thing. But if you can, like, if there is ever an option to get kind of a refund from Netflix, get it for specifically this we show. couldn't even afford to have Michael Cause... Eklund be in the whole episode. Sometimes his character is played by other people. <laughs> yeah, well, it just, like... <laughs> <laughs> they I mean that was on purpose that's part of Cadman's character but well yeah but th like think about it Chris think about it Look, I mean you don't, do you pay for a Netflix thing or have you been just using mine for if, you, if you're using yours why would I pay for one when I could okay. just use yours that, that's true that's true um, yeah like so the money that I've been feeding Netflix for the last however long because I have a Netflix account for so however long they turned it into this and I would really rather some of that back yeah, for shame, Netflix. For shame. I mean, you've done some good stuff in the past, Netflix, but this is not it. This is it's not meant it. to be the end. Wrap it up. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes. Uh, tune in next time. Tune in next time when I continuously speak into the mic nice and close like this. Chris, are you enjoying no. this? No, I say Vivaldi. Really? Vivaldi. All right, we're done. Thanks for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>